Hi Dixons, I'm Neil Miley, Executive Principal here at Dixons. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe to our channel, use the like button and comment below to tell us which episodes have been most useful for you or what you would like to see on the channel next. This video is part one of a five video mini-series and will provide a brief overview of our approach to assessment and how we use this information to shape student learning. Part one will cover our broad assessment principles. Part two, how we use percentile rank. Part three, how we report to parents. Part four, how we use progress measures. And part five, how the information from summative assessments is used in the classroom. As mentioned in previous episodes, we are very clear that data by itself, in its rawest form, is not important. Numbers in general are meaningless unless we know the context and can relate to them. The job of leaders and teachers is to extract meaning out of data and turn it into information. We believe the most important assessment data in our academies comes from formative assessment. Every day we use specific and repetitive minute by minute formative assessment and other leading indicators to help students develop. However, for our trust and academy leaders, analysing summative data, even though it's lagged, can also help inform interventions and dynamic resource allocation, both in the moment and over time. All our academies work on a cycle model, which if you want to know more about, please watch the cycle videos within our Who We Are playlist. Within our trust, each academy has the autonomy to sequence and teach knowledge as they see fit. Therefore, we only align around the end of year cycle three summative assessments because at this point we can be confident that the same content will have been taught in all academies. This assessment series usually takes place in mid-June. In addition to this end of year assessment, we only expect our academies to set one more mid-year summative assessment. Therefore, across the year, our academies will expect students to sit two summative assessments, one of which is collected internally and one that is collected centrally. The reason we only have two summative assessments is to recognise that the assessments need to be far enough apart for students to have the chance to meaningfully improve. Also, on the large domains of content, which most summative assessments sample, we know students will not make particularly rapid improvements. Additionally, we recognise if summative assessments are used too frequently, there are risks. Firstly, Students and teachers can get demoralised because hard work in class is not showing up as improvement. Secondly, students and teachers start to focus on short-term tactics which will lead to improvement on the summative assessment but does not lead to real improvement in learning. Thirdly, teacher workload increases alongside opportunity costs more broadly, since testing windows inevitably eat into teaching time and impose discontinuities into the flow of the school year. As a trust, we expect all summative assessments to be cumulative in nature up until the end of year 10. Cumulative assessments take advantage of the spacing effect. If you've already studied something, studying it again after a delay can produce a huge amount of learning. Knowing there will be cumulative summative assessments improves the way most students study. Research suggests that simply telling students that there will be a cumulative assessment may enhance their learning. Students often underestimate the value of repeated studying. However, we know preparing for assessments requires more time and energy devoted to understanding and remembering content. Once students have covered enough of the curriculum content, common assessments become full past papers, also known as global assessments. This shift in scope is unlikely to happen until the end of year 10. It is curriculum driven and decided by leaders and our cross-cutting teams. At this point, we start to grade assessments. All assessments prior to these are percentile ranked and this information is used to indicate where interventions need to be targeted. All assessments are created internally using the expertise of our cross-cutting teams. To support the process and make the assessments as rigorous for all students, they are blind, which means no more than two staff across the trust will see any single paper in advance. We believe this approach to summative assessments reduces teacher workload, minimises the impact of lost learning and improves the quality of our curriculum through ensuring interventions are timely, relevant and targeted. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel 
and share. I look forward to seeing you in part two.